This example, instead of a urn, like the urns we have in lotteries, and there are 10 balls in the urn. The balls are numbered from 1 to 10. How are we going to model this experiment? Remember, to define a model, all you have to do is to list the table with the outcomes and the probabilities. So the outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the probabilities are 0 0.1 or 10%. Remember, the probabilities, they have to add up to 1, which is the same as saying that they have to add up to 100%. We are assuming that all probabilities are the same, that's why they have to be equal to 0 0.1 each. So 10 times 0 0.1 equals to 1. Just a quick review of fractions here. 0 0.1 is the same as 1 divided by 10, by definition. If you multiply the numerator and the denominator by 10, it doesn't change the fraction. And now I have 10 over 100. 10 over 100 is 10. What I'm trying to emphasize is that the difference between this 10% and 0 0.1, the difference is just notation. They are exactly the same thing. This one is emphasizing that it's 10 over 100, 10%, and this one is just a typical decimal notation. The purpose of this example is to use R to draw balls and examine if the theoretical model is supported by the results. So basically what we are going to do is, we're going to draw a ball and repeat that many, many, many times. And then you are going to verify if the frequency that each ball was drawn is close to 10%, because that's what the model predicted, and we are using R to verify that the model is valid. Well. We can start by drawing a ball with a simple command, sample 1, 10, size equals 1. This is a little different than what we did before. Because we are assuming that all probabilities are the same, we can omit the argument prop. That's the default. R's default is if you omit, all probabilities are the same, so we don't have to include it. Also, we are not using strings, we are not drawing heads or tails. We are actually drawing numbers. If we are drawing numbers, we do not need to use quotes because quotes are used to tell R that you're talking about names or strings, but you're talking about numbers this time. We are not defining a vector, although we could. We don't need to because this notation already implies that this is a list, a list from 1 to 10. So the command got much simpler, much smaller. Now we can increase the size of the sample. I already copy and pasted the result below the command. So let's go to R. Sample 1 to 10. 1. So I draw the number 2. You can see in the console. And now let's draw 5 times. Now I draw 10, 5, 8, 9, 2. When I wrote the notes, I had drawn 4, 7, 8, 1, 6. However, there's a problem here. This is not exactly what you're trying to do yet. Why? By default, are samples without replacement. What that means is, whenever a ball is drawn, it's not put back, it's not replaced into the urn again. Therefore, there is no repetition. I cannot draw the same ball twice. Clearly, the experiment is changing over time. Now, the first time I draw a ball, it's one ball among ten. The second time I draw a ball is one ball among nine because I didn't put the first ball back. But that is not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the same experiment many, many, many times. So what I have to do is tell R to put the ball back. Every time we draw a ball, we must tell R to put it back. How do we do that? We include an argument that we hadn't used before. The argument is replace. In this case, we're going to set replace to true, all capital letters. That's the way of telling R, hey, whenever you draw a ball, you put it back. 
you replace it. So let's repeat this but with replacement. Here I have 24935. Notice that when I was writing the notes, the number 6 was drawn twice. That's because now this is possible since the balls are being replaced. Now, parentheses here, we could also have changed the probabilities. For instance, let's say there are actually two balls with the number 1 and no ball with the number 2. How would you change the command to reflect this experiment? Well, the probabilities this time, they are not going to be the same, so I have to specify. I'm giving the probability of drawing the ball number 1, 0.2, because there are two of them. And I'm setting the probability of drawing the number 2 to 0, because there is no number 2. Now, the other probabilities, I'm just leaving them the same. But let's go back to our example. The next step is to increase the size of the sample. Basically, I'm going to sample many, 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 many times. I'm going to draw 10 balls. To facilitate analyzing the results, I'm going to build a table. The function that builds a table is called table. Notice that I'm going to nest functions. How do I nest a function? Put the previous functions in parentheses and write table before. I'm using the function table and what is this function argument? Whatever is the result of this other function here. Now let's look at the results. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, 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 two, one, two, one, one. The first row is the balls that were drawn. The second row is how many times each ball was drawn. Okay, so the number two was drawn once, and the number six, for instance, was drawn twice. Okay. Let's now draw a hundred balls and graph the results. I'm trying to make the results easier to visualize and if you have a table with a hundred columns that will be hard to see. Now the function to graph, we're going to use this function many times in the next weeks. The function is bar plot. Now I'm nesting all other functions into bar plot. So I put now table in parentheses and put bar plot in the beginning of the command. So this is what we got. Okay, now let's look at this. So the ball number one was drawn 10 times. The ball number two was drawn nine times. The ball number six was drawn 14 times. Well, it's not looking like the model is working. Why? Well, why was the ball number six drawn more than the ball number five. If they all have equal probabilities, they all should have been drawn more or less the same number of times. Well, the sample is still small. Let's try a bigger sample. This time, let's try 100,000 draws. Now, much better. You can see that even though the number of drawns was not identical, but they are much closer. Finally, since you are exploring the function bar plot, let's give it more options. Basically, let's include more arguments in the function. The argument main tells R what is the title of your graph. In this case, notes 1, example 2. The argument YLAB tells R what is the label of the vertical variable. In this case, drawing distribution. The argument XLAB tells R what is the label of the horizontal variable. In this case, ball number. So let's go ahead. and now it looks much neater. You can see that this function has many options of arguments. 
to see all options, you can check this page here. You can play around with the options and you can learn how to draw beautiful graphs. Now, you can always go back to the R documentation. How do you do that? You Google whatever function you're interested or whatever topic you're interested and make sure you include R and documentation in your Google search and that's going to bring you whichever function you are looking for.